Good morning and welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. Deacon Donna and I and the whole congregation are happy to worship with you today. A bulletin for this service can be found in a link in the description section of the YouTube video that you might have just clicked on or in an email from the church. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The Word of the Lord. Let us read together Psalm 111. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord, they are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Our second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now, concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The Word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went into Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. 
At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Hi, this is Father Jonathan. So I have partial facial paralysis, and it is Bell's palsy, which is completely harmless. But this is as good as I can sound, and I look even worse. So this Sunday, I've asked my wife, Anne, to please read my sermon text for you. The great thing about visiting the Holy Land is that later, when you hear a place mentioned in the Bible, you can say, I was there. The cool factor for Bible study is wonderful. For example, I visited the synagogue in Capernaum twice. The town of Capernaum was abandoned and buried for centuries, but its uncovering by archaeologists beginning in the mid-1800s led to the discovery and partial reconstruction of a synagogue. It might be either the synagogue in which Jesus taught or the one on top of the one where Jesus taught. The place made a deep impression on me. I sat on stones warmed by the sun. There is no roof. And the flowering bushes nearby put a sweet scent in the air. I wondered what Jesus said when he was there my imagination encouraged by what were, perhaps, the very stones that echoed his words. We'll never know what he said because our only witness, the Bible, does not tell us. The writer left that forever to be a mystery, and yet we are given a detailed account of the reaction to his teaching. The listeners were astounded. Indeed, the teaching was so astounding that an unclean spirit, a son of the father of lies, was stirred to proclaim Jesus' true identity, saying, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And we are given the words of the listeners who said, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And so the writer's point was not to repeat what Jesus taught, but to demonstrate his authority, for he was the author, the word of God, and a human being. The writer goes on to tell us how Jesus exerted his authority over illness and evil and the reactions to him around Galilee. Much of the gospel story describes reactions to Jesus, while at the same time giving the example of life that Jesus wanted his followers to live. Jesus, the author, compels us to action. He authors our baptized lives, compelling us to live in an unworldly way, to love our enemies and forgive our persecutors to love one another and even die because of him, to be sent out as sheep among wolves, yet still be the conquerors of death. This unworldly way of life is mundane in the kingdom of God, the kingdom that Jesus began on earth. He spent only a little time teaching in the temple and the synagogues, according to the Gospels, but he spent a lot of time doing unworldly things, and he commanded his apostles and us to do the same. In this synagogue, we offer our worship and are fed with word and sacrament, which is entirely good and proper. We could be tempted to sit in comfort and listen to a great teacher or even a decent sermon. But I sometimes think that the most important thing we say here is the dismissal. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And our response, thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. <clears throat>
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diane, our bishop, and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Trenton that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those affected by violence and natural disasters. For Scott, Adam, Lori McLaughlin, Al and Mary Buford, Byron London, Britta Segan, and also Richard Bateman, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Anne Ralston Brown, Sherry Candillo, John Carmichael, Carter, Kathleen Clark, Mark Connolly, Dana, Joe Deering, Doug, John Dunn, Fran Dyer, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Father Harry Firth, Clay Glenn, Alex and Susan Green, Jennifer Brown Harnick, Michael Hendon, Jim, Joe and Pam, Ed Joyner Jr., Karen Joyner, Lachlan, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Leo, Madison, Patricia McLaris, Tyler and Tara Markham, Gabe Markham, Dave Masden, John Matthews, Tom Miles, Marcia Miller, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, William Michael Ritchie, Tom, Carly, and Theo Roberton, Judith Rojas, Dick Strong, Courtney and Tim Sturgis, Carolyn Watson, Don and Donna White, Bill Winslow, Zay, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. 
Let thy perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, for those serving in the military and their families, especially Loyal Otterson, Lauren Batson, Alex Battle, Matthew Carmichael, Aaron Delgado, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, Tom Gildea, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Luciana Larea, Sean Perrone, Chaz Porter, Dan Sanford. And now let us pray as our Savior Christ hath taught us, saying, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the and glory, glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.